Hello everyone and welcome to yet another interesting game from round 8 of the 2013 candidates tournament, it's Timur Rajabov vs Boris Gelfand. Uh, there's already uh, a critical position on the board here but uh, you know, you haven't seen anything. Uh, and before we see this game let's check out a couple of photos we have from this round. Here we have a, a starting position, uh, Gelfand with his usual start, a glass of water with a nice espresso and uh, we still haven't figured out uh, what Rajabov is having. Uh, here we have two nice close-ups of Boris Gelfand here. Uh, I believe it's also uh, before the first move was made. And here also also another, another nice close-up of Boris Gelfand. Uh, we also have two more photos, uh, but those are from the press conference, so we'll save them for for, for after the game. So you already seen uh, Kramnik versus Swidler, uh, that brilliant play by Kramnik that won him a very important point uh, in round eight, and you've seen uh, Vasily Vanchuk lose an, uh, yet another game on time uh, versus Alexander Grishchuk. So here we have it. Rajabov opens the game with knight to f3. Uh, we have c5, c4. So the English opening is on the board, knight to c6, d4, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and knight to f6. Uh, knight to c3, we have e6, g3, queen to b6, uh, knight to b3, getting the knight out of the way. Uh, knight to e5, and now e4. Uh, bishop to b4, uh, queen to e2, d6, uh, f4, attacking the knight, knight to c6, and bishop to e3. Uh, first bishop captures on c3, this comes with check, pawn captures, and now queen to c7. Uh, bishop to g2, and uh, this is the interesting position uh, of this game. Uh, as Gelfand says it, uh, uh, there will be a link in the description below, you can check it out after every video of the 2013 candidates tournament. Uh, you can check out some more photos in the description, uh, there will be a link, and also you can check out uh, an article by Peter Dodgers about every round of the candidates. And there you will also have videos um, about uh, from the pre press conferences after this game. So this is the kind of the, already the critical moment in the game, because Gelfand says that he had this position uh, numerous times on the board throughout uh, the 80s and 90s, and he would always either castle here, maybe he would go b6, prepared to develop the light square bishop, uh, but here he played e5, and e5 uh, was considered to be a novelty here, uh, which caused Rajabov to spend quite a lot of time. Uh, but um, uh, the thing is, this isn't really a novelty. This move was already played uh, by a very strong player. Viktor Korchnoi played this move uh, in 1988 uh, against Fernandez. And uh, I will put a link to that game in the description below as well if you want to check it out. So it's, um, I, I don't know why they considered this E5 move a novelty. Maybe because uh, this is the first time it, it was used uh, on such a high level. Uh, but I don't know, if Korchnoi used it, then that, that should definitely count. Uh, but either way, okay, e5, and now comes c5, and uh, this is uh, also one of the positions that Gelfand uh, talks about in, in the press conference. Uh, the thing is, here the engine suggests c captures on d5, uh, uh, d captures on c5, and after bishop captures, uh, the engine suggests capturing on f4. Uh, but uh, as uh, no player really understands why the engine is uh, suggesting this, uh, <laughs> that's why no one plays it. And uh, Gelfand uh, says that this doesn't really do anything for black, that this only plays into white's hands. So after this c5 move, Gelfand decides to go b6. And this move was uh, also played uh, in uh, in the game uh, Fernandez versus uh, Korshnoi, but then it had a different continuation. Uh, so b6, uh, we have c captures on b6, queen captures on d6, and now castles. Uh, Gelfand castles as well, and now comes f5. Rajabov decides to close the position here. Uh, rook to d8, uh, we have rook f to d1, and uh, queen to a3. Uh, rook captures on d8, knight captures on d8, and now bishop to g5. Uh, bishop to a6, attacking the queen, uh, queen to d2, and now queen back to e7. Uh, seems like a weird uh, square to put the queen, you know, right in front of this bishop on g5, but uh, as Gelfand will show, uh, this, uh, this makes sense. Uh, rook to d1, now comes knight to b7, bishop to f3, uh, rook to d8, uh, either uh, forcing the queen to move, uh, queen to c1, and now rook captures, queen cap uh, bishop captures, and uh, now comes knight to d6. 
Uh, Gelfen does have a better pawn structure. Uh, here you can see the, the isolated A pawn, the isolated C pawn, so those are all potential future targets, and uh, Gelfand doesn't mind uh, trading pieces. Uh, Bishop captures on f6 as uh, the e4 pawn was attacked twice, so uh, he decides to take care of it this way. Uh, G captures on f6 and queen to e3. Now, Gelfand also has a doubled f pawn, but uh, as you'll see in the game, this is uh, a lot less important than the weak C and the, the weak A pawn. Queen to c7, and now Rajabov has to make a very important uh, decision. What what does he do next? Uh, he does have a lot of problems here. The c3 pawn is weak, as we've said. The a2 pawn, also very weak. Uh, the bishop on d1, uh, not very active, but also nothing is defending the bishop on d1. So this is something you would uh, definitely want to take care of first. Uh, the thing is, if you do something like bishop to e2, uh, just let's say you want to exchange pieces and then you know, uh, exchange your weak bishop for uh, for Gelfand's strong bishop. Then comes the bishop captures, queen captures, and now queen captures on c3. So uh, you lose a pawn, and uh, here it will just be a slow death for black, black uh, for white. Black has a nice advantage on the queen side, and uh, he, he, Gelfand would surely push this to victory. Uh, another thing after queen to c7, if you decide to do something like bishop to c2, maybe decide to activate the bishop this way, uh, then the problem is this instant queen c4. Uh, already black is a threatening checkmate here and uh, you do have to react to this after knight to d2 uh, you attack the queen uh, also the knight is guarding the f1 square but now you lose the a2 pawn and again after something like bishop to d3 check king moves now comes bishop to b7 uh, there's a ni nice pressure on the e4 pawn and again there's this huge advantage on the queen side black can just march this a pawn to victory uh, also would be a very slow death for white so after this queen to c7 move, Rajabov decided to push a4, but a4, uh, as you'll see, also doesn't work uh, uh, because of queen to d7. It's a, it's a very nice move by, by Boris Gelfand. Uh, the queen is now again threatening to capture the a4 pawn, and now, as you've seen, the queen aligned itself uh, or herself uh, <laughs> with the undefended bishop on d1. So it's very hard to, uh, to decide what to do here. Uh, in the game, Rajabov pushed a5. Uh, with the idea that he wants to mess up black's pawn structure, uh, but now there is there is this problem of uh, of this bishop on d1 being undefended. So I do want you to pause the video here and uh, find find the winning idea here for Gelfand. So for those of you, uh, I will give it a couple of seconds as usual, uh, but for those of you who were able to find it, uh, congratulations, you are an excellent tactician. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, in the game Rajabo found knight captures on e4, which is a winning move, but there is an even fancier move, uh, which is queen to b5. If you found queen to b5, then you are then you're a machine. Uh, queen to b5 with the immediate threat of queen to f1 checkmate. Uh, once you stop this, now comes knight to c4, attacking the queen, also the knight, knight captures, queen captures, again you're threatening queen to f1 checkmate, and after queen blocks this, uh, now comes bishop uh, b captures on a5, and now you're simply gonna push this pawn to victory, and it's all over. Uh, whatever white plays, that's simply black's plan, and there, there's really no stopping this, You would, uh, white will have to uh, give up this light square bishop at some point. Uh, but okay, knight captures on e4. What uh, what Gelfand played was uh, is also quite quite winning. So if you found that, congratulations as well. Uh, now what what's the idea? Of course, if queen captures, then queen captures on d1. Uh, that's very annoying. <laughs> as queen uh, king to f2, uh, queen to f1 check, king moves, and now queen to e2 will be checkmate. So of course, Rajabov did not capture the knight. Instead, bishop to c2 was played, but now comes queen to b5. The idea that also uh, was working uh, a move ago. Uh, the threat is once again queen to f1 checkmate. Uh, so queen to f3 preventing this, but now comes knight to g5, simply attacking the queen. Queen to g2, and now b captures on a5 was played, uh, and it was in this position that Timur Rajabov resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, it's pretty much the same position we've had there, simply pushing the ape onto victory, this is unstoppable. Uh, and uh, Rajabov do doesn't want to be punished like this, so so he resigns. But there was an even there, there was an even fancier move in the position. Uh, instead of this slow death, uh, you have you have the very forcing knight to h3 check. And now whatever white plays simply loses. Only moves are king to uh, queen captures and king to h1. If you play king to h1, then comes bishop to b7. <laughs> A very nice move. 
uh, simply attacking the queen that's aligned with the king. So you either lose the queen or queen captures and then comes queen to f1. This will be checkmate. And uh, another very nice variation after knight to h3 check. If queen captures, uh, then comes queen to e2. And there's really no good defense against queen to e1 check. Uh, but also even if you stop this, then queen to e3 check will also be very deadly as bishop to b7 will finish the job. Uh, even if you try if you try to defend, then you uh, lose the g2 square for the king, then it's over immediately. Uh, but any other move loses uh, loses quite the same. So uh, after this, b captures uh, on a5, uh, Rajabo resigned the game, and the first victory for Boris Gelfand in this candidates tournament, uh, in the second half of the tournament in round 8, and uh, what a nice victory. Now, it's uh, it's not that that e5 move uh, just won Gelfand the game. It, it was a nice idea, the the, the, the idea Kochnoi had uh, in 1988, but it cost Rajabov a lot of time, and, uh, you know, uh, he, he didn't have time later in the game for to, for some, uh, some very important decisions. So, yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it, and we will not uh, talk about the standings just yet, as uh, we will show one more game from this round, as it's a very important game between the leaders, Magnus Carlsen versus uh, Levon Aronian. Uh, but uh, we do have a couple of more photos. Uh, this is a photo of Rajabov uh, from the press conference. Here you can see his, he, he's beaten and it's always, it's always hard to lose a, a, an important chess game, uh, let alone one from the, from the candidates tournament. So, and here is Boris Gelfand after the game. Uh, it, you know, he's suppressing that smile, but th that winning smile is definitely there. So yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marian Borka and Thomas Schmidt for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon uh, with the Carlsen vs. Aryan game from uh, round 8 of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.